tragedy strikes, accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911, next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911, late night terror. A woman on a suicide mission holds up a convenience store. Get in the store! Get in the store! Rescuers must proceed with caution to save innocent victims held at gunpoint. I was afraid for those people's lives. Then Rescue 911. We often have preconceived ideas of who is most likely to step forward in an emergency and risk their life for others. But on the night of July 21st, 1992 in Beaumont, Texas, one group of strangers discovered that heroes come from many different walks of life. Some of the footage in this story was taped as events unfolded. Continue. Some of the hostages were screaming, begging the female to let them go. My thoughts were, if we've got someone irrational, then when is she going to decide to shoot one of the hostages? Thermosilk is like a daily intensive conditioner that works with heat, so you won't blow dry. You'll blow beautiful. Glow beautiful with Thermosil. And after, tomorrow night at 9, only on Discovery Health Channel. Rebecca Duke was the first Beaumont police officer to arrive on the scene. I turned my headlights out and just approached silent and blackout. And I saw a guy pointing in the store as if to tell me there was someone in there. I motioned for him to get back. And then I walked up to try to look into the store to see where everybody was at the, at the time. Can you tell what kind of gun she has? Uh, she's got a rifle. Look at how she's holding a gun right now. Uh, she's holding it at your police officer. She's t doing what? Holding it at your police officer. I couldn't shoot because there were too many people in there. She was serious and I was afraid for those people's lives. I was genuinely worried about that. Within minutes, additional units arrived, including Officer Bert Moore. I took a safe position where I was observing her, but she couldn't see me. It does appear we have a hostage situation. She's not letting them leave. She has them uh, pinned up in the corner. 26, go ahead and call out SWAT. Some of the hostages who were screaming, begging the female to let them go. 
It appeared that she was not behaving rationally. My thoughts were if we've got someone irrational, then when is she going to decide to uh, either shoot one of the hostages or shoot one of us? After 30 minutes, hostage Nicole Cartwright was set free. I was really scared. I just knew I was going to die. I just kept begging her not to do it because I have a child in the car. She just said, if you have a child in the car, you can go. And I didn't ask any questions. I just left. I was relieved, but I was still scared for everybody that was left in there. Uh, other officers were arriving on the scene, and they began setting up a perimeter. She didn't care about any of the hostages in there. She just cared about dying. She wanted to die. And she wanted the police to do it. And at that point, she was going to have to do something serious for us to kill her. So we got shots fired. Stand by. Oh, OK, she just blew around in the ceiling. She was not only letting us know that she meant business, but she was letting the hostages know she meant business. I began thinking that she was going to shoot one of them or more. Hostage negotiator Sergeant John Bowles was brought in to try and arrange the release of the three remaining hostages. I had hoped to establish phone contact with her. If we can get to talking about the problem and all, there's always hope for a, a peaceful resolution. Ask her if she'll come to the phone and talk with me. What's she saying in there, John? She refuses to talk with anybody. I can see she has a uh, hostage directly in front of her. He advised that she has additional ammunition besides what she has in the gun. As far as we know, only the one shotgun, but she adamantly refuses to talk to anybody right now. My deal is she wants somebody to walk in the door so she can point the gun at her, at us, and so we will shoot her. The tempo of the incident was increasing. Uh, which is usually not a, a real good sign. Moving back to the front again. 130 all units out here. She's extremely unstable. Uh, you might be prepared because uh, she could go off at any minute the way it sounds. I could hear her in the background yelling at him, I'll show them, I'll make them come in. It led me to believe that she was fixing to do something dramatic. Patrolman Randy Stevens was helping provide cover for the SWAT team as they moved into position. SWAT was just like a few minutes away from getting set up and were fixing to take over the scene. The suspect had them surround her and she slowly walked them to the front door as they shielded her. It didn't look good. Moving around the front. After two hours, all the hostages were finally free. I mean, it was a great job. You know, and, I, and after it was over with, I told everybody that was great. It turned out just right, but it, <laughs> I was pretty surprised. Uh, once they got up closer and looked, you could tell that it was a man dressed as a female that grabbed the gun away from her. Greg Turner had stopped at the store on his way home from work. 
I was doing drag show, female impersonation. And I was so close to the gun, and I said to myself, there's no way she can hit anybody if I just grab it and hold the barrel to go upward. And I thought, it might burn my hands, I might get hurt in that manner, but it, it won't be no one get killed. And that's why I grabbed the gun. Unless it's an absolute last resort, I, I don't encourage people to take the kind of risks that he did, but uh, I'm sure that Greg felt at that point that he had very little to lose, and I'm sort of inclined to agree with it. It was fear, the whole thing. It was totally fear. I felt I was gonna be killed, but I honestly thought she was going to kill her. I really did. And I don't think I could have lived with that. <laughs> Hostage Susie Brewer will never forget what Greg did. I owe Greg my life, and I'm really grateful for him for saving my life. Paul Marshall had only been working at the store for three weeks. My nerves were completely shot after the incident. I mean, there were so many points where she was going to shoot us or something like that. I feel like I'm lucky because I came out alive. I was afraid I'd never see my kids again. The suspect was subsequently found not guilty by reason of insanity and confined to a state mental hospital. Some people thought because I was in drag, I don't deserve any type of recognition for what I did. I didn't do it for recognition. I did it for the safety of the Miss Susie. But Greg's a hero. I feel like he's the one that sees the moment. He's the one that should get all the gratitude. Let's face it, if he wouldn't have grabbed the gun, somebody would have been shot. You're the one that did it. The woman who did all this she she needed help and by her not getting really hurt maybe she's getting the help she needs now so i'm glad it went like that if it wasn't for him i wouldn't be here i wouldn't be here at all he had to have a lot of courage to do that he took a big risk i respect him We all should take first aid and CPR courses every year. By learning basic life-saving techniques, we might be able to save the life of someone we love. This series is dedicated to all the men and women who answer our calls for help and are there when we need them most. I'm William Shatner. Join us again next week for more true stories on Rescue 911. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.